Hi, this is Thomas from Believe in the Run. This is Robbie from Believe in the Run. Before we get started, Robbie, do you want to tease anything? We do have a giveaway at the end of this video, so make sure you stick around. I Don't give it, up on us. I think it's a good giveaway, too. It is. Like something good. you probably want. If you like trail shoes and trail you'll running, be into it. You'll, you'll be into it. So, Robbie, what shoe are we talking about today? We're talking about the Hoka Tecton X2. Okay, I know the Tecton X1 mm -hmm. was a fan favorite for our trail reviewers. Oh, yeah, actually, Inclu yeah. I mean, how many trail reviewers do we have go off on that I think year? We had four last year, and including myself. So two I two women. This is I put a lot of miles in this trail shoe last year. I really loved it. Okay, so what did you like about that first version so much? The lightweight, the propulsive feel of the shoe. It has that rocker geometry that Hoka likes to use in their shoes. The parallel carbon fiber plates give you almost like an independent suspension system. Everything you kind of want it in a fast trail shoe. Unlike a normal carbon fiber plate that's just one piece, there's actually two separated carbon carbon fiber plates that go through the midsole here. It acts both as kind of like a rock plate and a little bit of uh, gives you that energy return, but not, but it adjusts so you're, if you land on rocks or something, you're not, it's not just a rigid surface there. So is it interesting because I think they're the only people who are doing yeah, an independent doing suspension. That. All I have to say, we have the second version here, which is the same midsole carbon plate outsole combination that you found in the first one. Believe it or not, this new upper has changed a lot of the feeling about the shoe. Before you get into how that felt to you, is there enough change in this upper that it's making that much of a difference? Because uh, it looks similar. I'll, t I'll tell you what the huge difference was. Look at the first version. You can see, look at the lacing. Mm -hmm. and look at this lacing. Okay, so you used to knot it up a lot tighter in the well, throat. Well, we had, yeah, it almost had this like bowling style lacing. You know what I'm talking about, where it comes the whole way. Oh, all the way down, yeah. yeah. And uh, I didn't even notice that. It struck out, and not in a good way. It was more of a turkey. <laughs> that struck out. Um, that was the biggest issue, I think, we all had with this first version. It, w it felt like a long shoe, the lacing, it's just weird being It's right just off? Top. Yeah, yeah. They fixed that in this version, which we were happy about. So if it was good before, mm -hmm. and they fixed it, it's great now? It's hard, almost hard to find anything wrong with this shoe, because that was the major thing with this one, and kind of the thing that threw the whole shoe off. Mm -hmm. Felt a little long, felt a little weird in the upper. This is almost like the Speedgoat EVO, or just a typical Speedgoat, the lacing patterns somewhat similar. Mm -hmm. uh, you still got the toe bumper, but you have this light matrix upper is what they call it. Mm. Uh, you got a gusseted tongue in here. It's all comes together for like a pretty nice package. So I'm guessing with this change, looking at the way you have it laced up versus the old one, the lockdown's gotta be a lot better. Yeah, lockdown's better. I think you. it feels like you get a little bit more room in the toe, which- That's I, weird. I don't know because it's the same Midsole outsole last Yeah, but it, it's weird that that one, so you had to crunch it up so much that I would think there's plenty of room in there and you're saying there's more room in this cell. Is it because the lacing starts further back? It just feels more right, I should say. Okay. And maybe that was why, because you had to, because the shoe felt a little long, you, you did cinch it down more and so it did feel tighter in the first version. But I just feel like this shoe, they corrected everything that they needed to. All right. It feels good. Breathability? Breathability is great. No water crossings. There. Water crossings. Actually, I don't think I did got to do any water crossings in this shoe. See, I saw you when we went to the trail run. You, <laughs> I saw a river cross. I was like, is he gonna do it for the sacrifice? Dude, I was you kept so, your feet dry. It was like the it was like my first run after Boston. I was like, I don't feel like <laughs> getting soaking wet. my wet feet and then having mm. to run up huge hills after this. So. Yeah, I should have, I mean, in my looks, own testing, I should have done it. It looks like it would drain well. It doesn't look that much different from that one that looks clearly like you water tested it. Yeah, and you could see through the, I mean, when you hold it up to light, yeah, you can you see can. through there. It's pretty, yeah, it's gonna blow water It's pretty out. breathable. The money system here, we talked a little bit about the plate, but we've got two different foams down here, right? Explain the two different foams. So you have the nitrogen infused Profly Plus on the bottom here, that gives it that bouncy, responsive feeling while you have the more softer EVA closer to the foot. So all in all, it provides like a really nice cushion. It's not too soft, so it doesn't feel like you're running in a max cushion shoe. A shoe that has a lot of that, uh, nitro, like P-back style foam, um, um, which is the uh, Power Run PB foam that we got in the Saucony Endorphin Edge. Now this shoe is like crazy unstable, fun, 
real, lots of fun, but also kind of terrifying to wear on the trails. <laughs> the Tecton X kind of finds that sweet spot in between. I always like when they put a softer foam closer to the foot and a firmer foam on the bottom, even if it doesn't have a plate, because it does give you some structure while still giving you that comfort. So you get that feeling when you land of the cushion mm -hmm. and then having the snappiness of the foam underneath. On a trail though, how does that react? It's enough cushion to protect you from the trails and that you know the plates help with that as well but it's also you have you still have that ground feel where you can you know you don't feel like you're unstable or not sure where you're stepping by the way we didn't give the exact weight on this it's 8.8 .8 ounces or 252 grams for a men's size nine and 7.4 ounces 7.4 ounces 211 grams for uh, I think women's size seven. Kind of as light as you're gonna get almost. There's a few trail shoes that dip that low. All right, Robbie, tell me a little bit about the outsole because when it comes to trail shoes, sometimes that's the only difference between the road shoe and the trail shoe is the outsole. Yeah, I mean, this has a Vibro Mega Grip with light base outsole, one of the best outsoles you can find in the game. Pretty decent sized lugs. I don't have the official, I think it's like three millimeters or something. I was gonna say, I was looking at the Moore V3. Yeah. And that's a five millimeter lug. I mm. would say these look, I'm getting good with my millimeters. <laughs> I'd say these are about three millimeters. Provides nice traction on technical terrain, really any kind of terrain. Not great in sloppier conditions. Like if you're taking this through mud or snow, I remember I ran in this one in oh, like six inches of snow and it was just, it was, I was all over the place, but it's not really meant, <laughs> meant for, the, for that. It's not really meant <laughs> it's for not that. It's not a snowshoe. So we said last year that this is one of the best Hoka road shoes at the time. So Let's play a little game of pretend. All right. I am a trail role, runner. Role playing again. And I've come in and we're here at a store that actually sells shoes. We don't sell shoes. I come in and I'm like, I really like the look of this shoe, mm -hmm. but here's the kind of trails I run. What are the trails that I'm gonna be best suited for? What style of trail running is this shoe best suited for? I mean, we took, I think you can do it with anything as long as it's just not super sloppy condition. I mean, we took it on when we went out trail running a couple weeks ago. That mm -hmm. was, it's pretty technical terrain. Also has some road sections thrown in there. Gravel. Fire roads, gravel. You know what? I. Also don't hate if you would buy this shoe and just shave the lugs right off. I think it would actually be a pretty nice route. Now you're getting into the Speedland territory, I getting mean, your I'm clippers just, out. I'm just saying, you could do it. And I forgot to get the stock height on this. It is 32, 27, so 32 in the heel, 27 in the forefoot for men. 30, what is that, five millimeters? Five millimeter drop, 30, 25 for women. Um, and I believe that includes the midsole, or the insole and outsole. Hoka's been weird about that, some of their stuff. Like they're starting to switch over to where the measurements of full stack, but in the past, it wasn't always the case. All right, but this guy's gonna put you back a pretty penny, isn't it? Yeah, so that's one of the kind of pain points about this shoe is that it is $225. Bam! And it's, you know, we always say price is relative depending what you're getting. The only issue that I have is that this is, this was $200. Not much, not too much has changed overall. And if you are talking about racing shoes, carbon plated racing shoes, 250 is kind of the standard these days for well, road shoes, so. I have a question for you. Yeah. I kind of know the answer, but I'm gonna throw it out there as a softball. When it comes to trail shoes though, durability versus say a road shoe, how many miles you're gonna get out of it, I feel like you can run a trail shoe into the ground. But at the same time, it's still like, I mean, I think $225, for this is the most expensive trail shoe, aside from the Speedlands hmm. or Norda, but as far as a, you know, mass produced kind of. Uh, yeah, Hoka, Hoka's big time. Yeah, we're, we're, we're talking the most expensive in the market at this point, so. So this could also be a flex if you show up to like your, oh, it, your trail run, you're like, Oh yeah. yeah. And it's gonna be a flex, cause these, when you see, when you show up the trail run, people are gonna know it's a Tectonix too, with the bold lettering on the side. I gotta say, I. I love the design of the shoe. I think they really knocked it out of the park on this one. I, you did look good on the trails when you had your nice teal get up. Thank you. I thought you did a really good job coordinating. <laughs> you said you didn't plan it, but I don't, I don't think, believe it. I don't think I actually did. This will be at the top of the list for 2023. Definitely in the racing category, maybe best overall. All right, Robbie's calling a shot. He's going yard on this one. Man, Hoka's really, really up in your game with the Rocket X2, now the Tecton X2, all those X's are, I'm looking forward X to is see, gonna get you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see what the mock X is, is gonna do. That's a that's a thing we're. I feel like about. that's the road version of this shoe. So hopefully you like it. All right, uh, Robbie, you promised there was a wait, teaser. Wait, I did. So what is it gonna be? All right, today we're giving away a hydration vest courtesy of Weiss. 
So Taylor, our trail, lead trail reviewer, he wore this, uh, not this one, but he tested out uh, an, a model of this. He really loved it. Uh, it's a 10 liter pack, has some nice- What does it say here? Believe in the Run. Yeah. It actually they has actually, Believe they in they the Run brand on it. On the pack, yeah. That's pretty cool. So uh, it comes with some- Insulated hydration Got some water too. bottles here for the chest. Um, and then it also comes with, I believe, a rear Full hydration ladder. pack. Yeah, a yeah. ladder pack. So it's a really nice piece. This size is men's medium to large, so it's chest size 36 to 41. I think it's like a European or South American company. Sorry guys. Look at this. Custom, believe in the run. Yeah. It's got some reflective uh, pieces on it, even though you're on the trail, maybe sometimes you cross over. It does have a vented back. Here's the uh, ladder right here. Yeah, buddy. which is really nice, super Plenty of pockets, dude. Mm -hmm. Like you could, like there's side pockets here, there's zipper side pockets. By the way, we're not even like paid no, to do this. this is pretty just, cool. They just like gave this as a giveaway, so. All right, so how, how is someone gonna enter for this giveaway? You subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. Leave a comment about hydration, we'll figure it out. Yeah, just say I want the bag. Yeah. Secure the bag. Yeah. How about that? All right, secure the secure bag. Secure the bag. And we'll uh, pick someone out. Is this a US only thing? Yeah, it's gotta yeah, be because okay. yeah, sorry. you can't do contests sorry outside to the all US. Sorry to international people, but US only. We'll get it out to one of you. We'll, do, we'll I'll put it in the description. And, and also when, when we're getting the run on someone. the back here too. The, yeah. See, the problem is with contests, there's different rules for different countries. We don't make them. We don't make the rules. And we're we can't just be like, okay. We break the rules. Yeah, we do break the rules. Wait, not for this video. Not for this though. Sorry. We stick in the rules for this one. So this is what we can don't do. Us. US only, also shipping. Yeah, I don't even know how shipping works. Yeah. I usually just put it in the mailbox. I hope someone takes it. Planes, trains, there. automobiles. Uh, thanks for watching. Have any questions or comments about the shoe or the vest? Let us know. Check out all the stuff. Make sure, yeah, our podcast, sign up for our email list. Podcast, by the way, we hit number one on the running charts for the first time today. So Boom. There you go. Number one in running. Not, no big deal. Yeah. So the Drop Podcast, Fuel for the Soul. Obviously check out our website, Instagram, Strava Club, all those things. Yeah, and, and uh, listen to the drop. Yeah. Hey, you know what, Brandon? You could even throw up a picture of us hitting number one on the chart. Do it. All right, drop. people. Thanks for right. watching. Talk to you soon. So comment below. What should we have them say? We can, I feel like we have so much power. We can like make them say anything for this. Um. I don't know, something with hydration? Hydrate me, splash me. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but that might work. I wanna get, I wanna get wet. Yeah. <laughs>